So in the last Blender tutorial, we went over some pretty simple things like basic modeling, how to make some basic looking objects. I think we did a traffic cone as well. Uh, all pretty simple stuff. But now you're probably thinking like, wait, if I want to make something like really complicated, I have to do all that by hand? No. You don't. You see, Blender has this hidden little toolbox called modifiers that can speed your modeling process up so much, it's crazy. For a more formal definition, a modifier is an automatic operation that changes the geometry of your mesh. There's like a hundred of them, so I'm only going to go over the most commonly used ones today, because there are some in this toolbox that I have literally never used before in three years of messing around with Blender. So yeah, let's get started. So, modifiers. Let's not waste any time, and I'm just going to start talking about them. The first one I want to talk about, and probably one of the most important, is called the Subdivision Surface Modifier. And what this one does is, if I apply it to my cube, it essentially just makes it really high poly. Uh, it splits every face into multiple faces, and you can even change the level to make it like more detailed or less detailed. But the cool thing about this one is if you go into edit mode, then you can still manipulate the geometry as if the uh, modifier like wasn't applied to it. And you can make all sorts of like weird organic looking shapes, or you can add loop cuts, which we went over last time, and uh, you can actually change like the way the subdivision looks, make it look more like a cube or more like a cylinder uh, or whatever you're trying to make. So super useful modifier, it can turn any blocky looking thing into some really high poly, uh, super professional looking mesh. No matter what you're modeling, you're probably always going to use this one at least once. Now the second one I want to go over is the mirror modifier. Actually, we're going to have to uh, offset our mesh a little bit for this one, but what the mirror modifier does is it just, in the name, it mirrors the mesh across the origin point. And the origin point is that little gold thing down there. Uh, obviously, if you want to change the position, you can right click, go to set origin, and there's a, there's a ton of different options. So I'm going to go 3D cursor for now, and that puts it in the center of the viewport. So now, if I try to mirror it, it'll go right across the center of the viewport. There's also different axis you can do, y-axis, z-axis. Uh, some of them don't work depending on the cube's position, but since I'm rotating around the x-axis, that works just fine. And now if I go into edit mode before applying the modifier, then uh, you can see I can manipulate the mesh and basically have two different things going on at once. Uh, it's super cool. Now obviously, as soon as you apply a modifier, the effects are applied to the mesh. Let's, let me mess something around. There we go. The effects are applied. There's no way to undo them unless you, unless you press Control Z. Then you can go back, obviously. But once you've applied a modifier, the geometry is as it is. So there's no way to further manipulate it with that modifier unless you obviously control Z it or add another modifier. The mirror modifier is super useful when it comes to like character modeling, because if you want symmetry, you can just model one side of a character and then mirror the other side to the other side of the axis. So huge time saver and you can make some pretty cool patterns with it. Next, let's go over the array modifier. This one is probably the easiest to understand out of all the modifiers on this list. All it does is create a line of objects. Uh, the offset is right here, so you can make them further or closer apart or even go in the other direction you can change how many you have in a row you can even change like the axis that they're offset about another super cool feature there's a couple more advanced things you can do like you can make the offset around another object or make it like a radial array a circle but we're not going to go into those today since they're kind of complicated next up let's do the boolean modifier i'm going to spend some extra time on this one since it's a little bit difficult to understand and we're going to need two objects for it so i'm just going to add in another cylinder so i'm just going to add in a cylinder now what the boolean modifier does does is it cuts a hole in an object using another object as reference. So if I put a cylinder like this deep in my cube and then applied it, the whole area where the cylinder overlaps the cube is just going to be cut out. So the way you do it is the object that is having a chunk cut out of it is the one you apply the boolean modifier to, just like that. And then you take the little eyedropper and select the mesh that is doing the cutting, the cylinder. Then you apply the modifier and you can delete the old mesh and you can see the hole is nice and clean in the cube. This is like the very, very basics of the Boolean modifier, but there are some crazy things you can do with it. Obviously, you can edit the uh, hole that you've made in the object, uh, bevel it, make all sorts of cool looking patterns. The cool thing to understand about the Boolean modifier though, is any hole you see in any object can be created with the Boolean modifier. You can make some really cool patterns as well. Like if I just take a plane here and scale it way up, and let's just say I made some crazy looking pattern in it as well. Nice. Pretty cool looking. Now what if I wanted to take it a step further? Combine modifiers. Alright, I could set the origin of this to the 3D cursor. I could give it a mirror modifier, just uh, across itself like that. 
and apply it. Now I can use these as a boolean modifier on the plane. And if I just cut this away, you can see I'm left with only the bits that didn't get overlapped by anything. It's a super cool way to make like sick looking patterns and just add a lot of extra detail to meshes. All right, next up, let's talk about the build modifier. Now this one is very rarely discussed. It's actually not used that often, but it's kind of surprising for me since it's a really useful modifier. And I'll show you a great application for it right now. To start, we're gonna go into edit mode and we wanna add a lot of faces onto our cube for this. So I'm just gonna right click and hit subdivide. And this just obviously subdivides all the faces, uh, sort of like the subdivision surface modifier, but uh, it maintains the geometry without like curving it or messing it up at all. So I'm just gonna do this a couple different times till I have quite a few faces. Now I can tab back into object mode. Now add a modifier and build modifier. Now you'll see at the start, it completely makes the cube disappear. But if we go down here to the timeline, we can see if we scrub forward, it slowly adds faces to the cube. Now you can actually hit the space bar to see this play in real time. And this is because the build modifier is meant to make animations with in Blender. It's not something that you use for just straight up modeling. Now I know this may seem a little bit complex, but trust me, this is much easier to understand than I'm making it out to be. If you just set this to randomize, and scrub forward like pretty far, maybe not quite all the way, then you can just apply the build modifier and your mesh will permanently take this form, which is super, super cool looking. And since it's like sort of blocky, low poly, uh, with a little bit of a random feel to it. And if you add a subdivision surface modifier on top of this, then it rounds out all the edges, makes it look even better. Then you can just apply this, right click, and hit shade smooth a beautiful feature of blender i believe we went over it in the last episode and then auto smooth of course to make it look nice and smooth uh, there's a ton of applications for this modifier as well if you want to create some sort of like uh, organic looking mesh with a lot of different curves in it then this is the modifier for you Next, we're gonna talk about the wireframe modifier. This one is a very easy one to understand. If you apply it to a mesh, uh, say this cube, then it just takes all the edges and converts them into a full mesh. You can change the thickness as well to get a different look. And it's, it's really cool, a lot of applications for it. And once again, if you apply it, then you can combine it with other modifiers. Like the array modifier, you can just create like a stack of cool looking cubes out of it. Subdivision surface modifier, you can make them all look smooth. Combining modifiers give you such a crazy like toolbox to use. There's so many unique shapes you can make. It's like endless creativity. So just go crazy with them. Let's see how it looks on like a cylinder. If I scale this up, wireframe modifier. Yeah, that's super sick. This alone you could even use for like a game as a cage or a background prop, maybe even like a trash can. Modifiers are the king of Blender. Never underestimate what they can do. So to show the power of modifiers, uh, I'm gonna try to be making a jar today with no reference images, just a cube and modifiers, not even any cylinders, because I just wanna prove that you can make s some crazy shapes with them. All we're gonna do is add a subdivision surface modifier, give it a quality level of about, let's go four. Now I'm gonna hit numpad one on my keyboard to go to a straight 2D view, because this is super helpful when modeling. Just gonna go straight into edit mode now. Let's make it look like a jar. About right there maybe, to flatten off that bit right there. Now another loop cut to the bottom, and let's make this bit a little bit more round, maybe about there. Now this isn't quite perfect. I'd say there's still like a couple modifications you would have to make to it for it to be like video game ready, but it's just incredible to me that with just a cube and one modifier and some very basic modeling tools, you can make something that looks this cool. Imagine if I had to model every single one of these faces by hand. Like that would have literally taken me probably three and a half hours. But with a modifier, I made this in like 15 seconds. If you wanted to do like a cell phone as well, you could scale this down, scale it up on the Y axis, give it a nice looking iPhone shape, give it a subdivision surface modifier crank it all the way up and let's give it one loop cut just stretch it up to about there and another loop cut down to about there and it already basically resembles a phone obviously you would have to add a lot more detail to it but these are just basic meshes that you can create basically out of the blue with modifiers besides those examples i'm not going to give you guys like a hard uh, mesh to make by yourselves step by step like I did last time with the traffic cone because for modifiers especially I want you all to just be creative with them and to experiment with them on your own because a lot of what helped me get better with blender was learning the tools that it took to make something and then just trying to apply them on my own this is probably the only episode of the series where I'm going to do this because I just want you all to discover what you can do with modifiers on your own because it really helps your brain just understand where you can apply them when you're modeling 
and how you can use them best to save time. I hope you all enjoyed episode number two of the tutorial series, and we will be back next time to discuss even more features of Blender. Well, see y'all later.